This area here is called Shinjuku, the place I showed you a couple weeks ago when I went out one evening to shoot a roll of Lomo 800 in that area. Well, actually, I didn't shoot the whole roll, a little more than half, but I still had 13 shots left, and so only a day or two later, I packed my stuff again and headed into central Tokyo in the evening, but this time, when I got to Shinjuku, I took another train down a couple stops to this area, which is called Shibuya. The name Shibuya often refers to the area around Shibuya Station, which is another one of Tokyo's commercial hubs, housing a popular shopping district, a lot of nightlife, and is also known as a center of fashion in Tokyo. What's probably most famous, at least from my personal perception, is the Shibuya Scramble, which is known as the world's busiest road crossing that holds all cars from all directions at once to let all the pedestrians cross the road in any direction at once. It's always quite a sight to be had. With some frames of Lomo 800 left, I got off the train at Harajuku station to then walk to Shibuya station and find a couple shots on the way. So Harajuku, like most of Tokyo, has spots that are extremely crowded and then you pop into a random little side street and find yourself in what sounds like silence compared to the main road. I've been to these streets before but I've never explored them in the dark and so that's what I decided to do here. It took quite a while actually to find my first subject, mainly because I was being extra careful to not shoot too easily seeing as I didn't bring an extra roll and was only going to get 13 photographs. At one point, I came to a street with a restaurant that had something interesting going on in front. At first I was fond of the lighting, and then I found an intriguing spot with rather random subjects which felt like the right moment to get my first shot of the night. Here's the shot, and I like the start of the night. This is another one of those photographs that isn't flashy or impressive, but rather simple with interesting details. At least, I find them interesting. The main point of interest that initially caught my attention were the two green cones that intrigued me because of the rather funny placement. I just found it amusing how the cones sat there signalling that for some reason you shouldn't go behind them, but the way they sort of unobtrusively sat there on a doormat seemed so non-communicative of their point that I found it funny. Then on the left is a normal information stand with the dinner menu, and behind is something that is very common in Japan, holes and stands for your wet umbrella, which you leave outside when entering the restaurant. And then there's the one guy who didn't get it. The poor umbrella looks so sad how it lies on the edge of a step there, about to fall another level. So do you get what I mean? It's a mundane scene with funny details that make the photograph amusing, at least for me. First shot of the night. Then, not so far down the street, I came across a cool looking window that I decided to photograph. This is the result, and I'm liking this a lot. So what caught me at first was that this is another prime example of Japanese windows being filled with stuff. Also the lighting was pretty cool with the cold looking lights coming from the back contrasting the warmer light from the street. And then as a neat addition I enjoy the tree that places itself in the foreground. I like this shot for the implications again. The items behind the window spark my curiosity for what that room is and who's there. You know I enjoy this kind of stuff. Here's another famous spot of Tokyo you've probably seen before. Then I'd walked a good bit again through more quiet streets and some busier areas without finding another shot until I came here where I spotted this house that was harshly front lit from a nearby store. What was so intriguing to me was the shadows that appeared on the wall. It was a very strong and harsh light placed in a way that when a person passed in front of it, they would create a rather clear shadow. I thought it would be so cool to photograph these houses with the yellow one having a clear humanoid shadow on it. 
Unfortunately, it was still a really dark scene and I had to lower the shutter speed quite a bit to a point that I wasn't sure whether the fast moving shadows would even be captured properly, but I remained optimistic. Here is the result, and as you can see, sadly my optimism was blinding me here and the shutter speed was way too slow to capture the shadow. All that can be seen is a blurry dark patch on the wall which erases the main idea of this photograph, but it was worth a try. Then I continued my walk and came across this house. Sadly, I don't have any footage of getting this shot because my GoPro was failing me again, but good news, since then I've replaced my SD card and so far it seems to be working fine again. Anyway, I had found this house which intrigued me with its little jungle in front of it and the random green cone that sort of looks like it's trying to fit in the scene, but it really doesn't. A little detail that I also wanted to capture was the silhouette of the piggy bank in the window. Overall, not a special shot, but I still like it. <laughs> then I walked further down towards Shibuya Station, still exploring the little streets of Arajuku, and came across a fascinating scene. However, it was very dark as you can see, or not see I guess. I set up a vertical shot and tried to capture it. Here's the result, and it worked out alright. Now you can see what I was trying to capture here. There was this one lamp lighting up this corner, and what caught my attention here were the amount of plants. This photograph shows a part of Tokyo's character that I appreciate so much. Tokyo is great at mixing urban and green, and this corner was a little extreme, but that made for a good point in the photograph. Basically it's just a photograph of a lamp, but from the left and right you could see all of these leaves coming into the frame, almost pushing the houses into the background. I love how much greenery Tokyo has, and this corner with that one lamp shining its light into the darkness of the night made it also look a little mystical, so I got the shot. Then, as I was walking down this road, I heard a group of skaters coming my way. This is the shot I ended up with, and it's a miss. I would have loved to snap a handheld shot of them, but it was just too dark so I had to use the tripod, which however didn't really make things much better. I didn't think through this properly because the skaters were fast and I had little time. Looking back, I think I should have probably just tried a panning shot instead of this semi-still shot with the skaters so blurry that you can't even see that they're skaters, but that's photography. Some things work, some don't, and by looking back at the moments like these, I can hopefully learn for the future. getting pretty close to Shibuya by now and came across this garage. I spotted a guy in the middle behind a counter doing some work, it looked like they were just sorting out some papers or something. I thought a straightforward shot with the garage entrance as a big frame could work out quite nicely, so I tried it. Here's the result, and I think this turned out pretty cool looking. I love how well the framing turned out here and the balance with the subject in the centre. Apart from that, this photograph is filled with details again, such as the two cones on the left and all the signs and colours scattered around the middle. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with the outcome. As I was walking up the street, I came across a Korbang, which is a small Japanese police station which you can find pretty much everywhere in Japan. What caught me here were the cute plants behind the window. Whew. 
here's the result, and I'm happy with what I got. Japan has this tendency to be so cute and sweet somehow, and they even managed to pull that off with the police station. At least I find these plants in a row behind the window quite sweet. So that part works out, also the lighting looks pretty cool, however I'm not too sure about the composition. I already wasn't while shooting, and now I'm still quite undecided on what to think of it. It's pretty random, but I guess it gets the point across. Next, I had arrived in a pretty busy area of Shibuya and came to a street full of restaurants. I switched to the 50mm to try to get a shot of the people here. I walked through in a normal pace trying to blend in, even though I surely stood out in size and also, I mean, I had a GoPro on my head. But nevertheless, I tried to stay focused, and as these two young workers passed me, I thought that they could actually be quite a nice subject, and so I snapped a shot of them on the hunt for an evening meal. Yes, I know, it's backs again. This shoot was just days after the Shinjuku sessions, so at this time I hadn't yet noticed my tendency to only shoot backs, and so I was still doing so here. Despite that, however, I really like the shot. It feels like a POV, as if I were one of them. It makes me imagine that they were actually a group of three and I'm the guy at the back and these two are my colleagues. I like how both of them have their head turned to the side on the lookout for dinner. And also, I love the atmosphere. The 50mm compressed the background in such a pleasing way with the wonderful bouquet of all the lights. So, I think this one isn't too bad. Then it was time to head to the scramble, which was around the corner here. I was again feeling quite overwhelmed by the crowd here and didn't really know what to shoot, however recently I got really inspired by the way Joe Greer shot this place on his recent trip to Tokyo so that I think I'll try to come back here to shoot again with a better idea of what my aim is. Here I spotted a guy at the front of the crowd waiting to cross the road and I snapped a simple shot from behind. Again, nothing special, but I do like the feeling of isolation on the subject this photo evokes. The lens blurs out everything except the subject, but you can still clearly see that this is a crowded place. Yet the composition and the pose of the subject with their hands behind them makes for an unexpectedly calm photograph, which I like. Then it was scramble time and I was in the midst of it, but I didn't really find anything to shoot until I came to the road on the other side where I spotted a guy with a cool hat on a scooter. I then thought this could be a decent opportunity to capture the scramble, but with the focus being on something else. Here's the result, and I think it's not bad. While yes, it is another pack, I do like the idea of photographing the scramble without photographing the scramble. Do you know what I mean? Then I got another shot of this guy, but sadly this one didn't work out. The point I was previously talking about is lost here, and so it loses the one thing I liked. Then I slowly walked away from the scramble, but I was still in the midst of a very busy road, and came to another crossing. So this biker arrived and I was fond of their look with the hat, the black coat and the earphones and that I felt compelled to get this shot which turned out alright in my opinion. I really like how the feeling of the crowd is conveyed with the people in the foreground. And that was the last shot on the roll, so I winded the film back into its canister in the middle of the crowd and ended the shoot here. 
I feel like this second session was less successful when compared to the one in Shinjuku, however I know you value just that on the channel that I also show the shoots that didn't go too well. Nevertheless, there were a couple cool shots from this night which I'm happy with, and I had a great time again, which in the end I always think is what matters most. Not the results of the photography, but the process and the enjoyment I get from the activity. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed coming along this evening. Before I say goodbye, I'd like to briefly thank the lovely people who are supporting me and my work on Patreon. If you're interested in extra videos such as tutorials, or maybe Lightroom presets, or even physical postcards, you can check out my page via the link in the description. Also, I have a print shop by the way. With that said, I hope to see you again soon. Until then, goodbye.